Frederico's Kitchen. I'm Frederico. Today we're going to show you how to make great meals from items you may already have at home. So let's get started. Today's recipe that I'm going to show you is Southwestern Chicken. The ingredients for the marinade include salt, pepper, crushed red pepper, garlic powder or garlic salt, chili powder. If you don't have chili powder, you can substitute cayenne pepper, seasoning salt, Worcestershire sauce, red wine vinegar, a little hot sauce, chopped garlic, and also canola or vegetable oil. We want to season the chicken and we're going to season the chicken with the same ingredients that we're using in the marinade and the reason we're doing that is because we want to add an extra level of flavor to the chicken and also to the marinade. So and we are going to season well on both sides. Uh, This is going to be good. I can tell you already. And once the chicken is seasoned well, we're just going to set it aside and begin to make our marinade. Now it's time to make our Southwestern marinade. I normally use a freezer bag because it's easier doing cleanup, or you can do it in your glass dish if you like. So I'm going to start with my wet ingredients. I'm going to use a about a cup of the oil, a little bit of hot sauce, a couple tablespoons of red wine vinegar, a tablespoon of Worcestershire, a little seasoning salt, a little garlic salt, a little chili powder, red pepper flakes, we're going to add about a tablespoon of garlic, you can add more garlic if you like, a little pepper, a little salt, and your marinade is ready to go. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and add our chicken to the marinade. And what we want to do is Submerge it in the marinade, close it so the air is out of the bag. Let it all just kind of seep in and you want to take it and refrigerate it for at least 30 minutes or longer. Okay, the chicken is finished marinating. Now it's time to put it back in our container, which we've done, and we want to put it in a 400 degree preheated oven for about 55 minutes. Okay, our chicken has been cooking now for about 25 minutes, so I have this little thing that I like to do. It's a little secret, if you will. What I do is I take the chicken and I baste it a little bit. You know, take some of those juices that are in the pan and bring them up to the top just so to keep my chicken moist and juicy. Don't try this at home. Just kidding. You definitely want to do this at home. And then we're going to put it back in for the remainder of the time uh, so it'll be nice and done for us. Our chicken is done now, our, south, our southwestern chicken is done now, so we're going to pull it from the oven, see what we're working with. Should look very nice. Wow, we look at that. looks great so we're just gonna take a piece just want to test it and see just how juicy it really is gonna slide it into our cutting area here and we're just gonna cut into it wow looks nice and tender moist and tender just like you want it for serving you can cut. so now we're all ready to plate our southwestern chicken and what we're going to do is we're going to just accompany that with some vegetables, uh, which you can do your choice. You just got a couple of carrots, a little celery, and some uh, broccoli. And 
then we want to just add a little bit of brown rice. And that's Southwestern chicken. Welcome to Frederico's Kitchen. I'm Frederico. Today's recipe includes two items. Spicy crab cakes with a cool lime sauce, and we're also going to make stuffed chicken breast with cranberry dressing. Let's get started. Today's recipe are crab cakes with a cool lime sauce. In the recipe, we're going to put a six ounce can of crab meat, some rich crackers that we're going to crush, there are about 14 or 15 of them, spicy brown mustard. Well, what we did was put some red pepper flakes in regular mustard, onion, two heaping spoons of mayo, sour cream lemon juice, salt, pepper, cayenne pepper, garlic salt, seasoning salt. Now it's time to mix all of our ingredients. So we're going to take the crab out and we're just going to put it into our bowl and we're just going to flake it a little bit so that we get you know the most out of it and kind of crush up the big pieces. Okay, set that aside. Then we're just going to crush up the ribs, which is very easy to do. We just put them in a baggie. Takes only a few seconds to do that. We're going to pour those in. Add the mayo. Then we add our mustard I'm going to add the onions a little bit of sour cream a little dash of lemon juice salt pepper a little cayenne garlic powder, seasoning salt, and then we're going to mix that all together very well. And we'll be ready to cook these up in just a few moments. Okay. For our cool lime sauce, we're going to take two tablespoons of sour cream. That's one, that's two, it may be a little bit more, but don't worry, it'll be all right. And then we're going to take a little bit of lime juice. And we're just going to mix that up really well. This will be the topping for the crab cake once it's complete. And then we're just going to season it a little bit with the same seasonings that we use in the crab cake. and mix that well and that's your cool lime sauce for the crab cake okay now it's time to put our crab cakes in the pan so we're just going to scoop out a little bit and flatten it out into a hot pan that already has oil in it you can use canola or vegetable oil that's fine and so we're going to make a few crab cakes and then we're going to top them with our cool lime sauce that we made a little bit earlier. And it's only going to take a few minutes for these to com be completed. And then you're all ready to taste. Okay, now we're just going to flip the crab cakes over after they've been cooking a few minutes. So we just want to get them golden brown on each side. And once they cook on this side, we'll be ready to plate them up. Our crab cakes are ready to pull from our pan, so you want to be kind of careful with them because they are kind of delicate. They're going to be a little bit moist. So what we're going to do is we're going to drain them on the paper towels for about a minute or a minute and a half. Let them set for about that time. 
then we'll be ready to add our cool lime sauce and plate them up and there we go that's what the spicy crab cakes look like okay now we're ready to plate up our spicy crab cakes with the cool lime sauce so what we're going to do is just put it in the center of the plate we're just going to grab two of our crab cakes and we're just going to put a little of the cool lime sauce right over the top like so and we're just gonna put a little bit of cilantro for decoration maybe add a little cool lime sauce on the side and there you have it spicy crab cakes with cool lime sauce in this recipe we're going to use three chicken breasts you can use chicken thighs if you like or even turkey so for our ingredients on the stuffing, we're going to add three stalks of celery, two cloves of garlic, a medium onion, a package of stuffing mix that has cranberries, and a can of chicken broth. So now we're just going to chop our vegetables. We start with chopping the celery. We're just going to kind of do a rough chop so that we can get these ingredients ready to saute for the uh, dressing, which we're going to keep making. So we're just going to take our onion, cut that in half, and just give it kind of a rough chop, go all the way down the side. The onion is going to add some extra flavor to that cranberry dressing that we have. You can cut. Now we're just sauteing our vegetables, uh, which consists of the celery, the onions, and the garlic. And we're just sauteing that for about five minutes. And then we're going to add it to our pot, which is boiling right now, for our chicken broth to add the cranberry dressing to that. So sauteing only takes a few minutes, and it just uh, will kind of tenderize those vegetables for you uh, so you can add them to your other ingredients. And what we're going to do to that as well is just add a little bit of salt and pepper for flavor and then we're ready to go okay now we're ready to complete our stuffing so what we're going to do is we're just going to take the stuffing and add it to our chicken broth and we're just going to stir it you know if the stuffing is a little dry what you can do is add a little hot water to it as well so we're going to do that now we're going to add a little hot water to it. Mix it up pretty well. And it's gonna be very consistent, you know, as stuffing is. Then we're gonna add our vegetables, the celery, the onions, and the garlic, and we're gonna mix that completely, mix that very well. And we're gonna let that cook down for about five minutes covered and then we'll be ready to stuff it in our chicken breast and complete this recipe okay the dressing is ready so we're just gonna season a little bit I wanna add a little bit more cranberries to the mix first stir that in a little salt a little pepper basil garlic powder, seasoning salt, mix that all well and now we're ready to stuff our chicken breast. Now we're ready to stuff our chicken breast so what we're going to do is we're just going to cut the chicken breast a little bit, separate a little bit at the meaty end of it so that we'll have a place to put our stuffing and that's what it should look like once you cut it butterfly just a little bit. Okay, now we're ready to season and stuff the chicken. So we're just going to use the garlic, seasoning salt, basil, cayenne pepper, pepper, salt. And we're going to flip it over to season the other side as well because you know I like well seasoned food and I hope you do as well 
and we're going to put the same seasoning on the other side. And after we season, then we're going to stuff it with the cranberry stuffing that we've completed and then we'll be ready to go in the oven. This is going to turn out really well. You're going to really like the taste of the cranberry stuffed in the breast with the dressing. This is probably one of your favorites from now on. And then we're going to take some skewers that we've soaked in water earlier and just kind of punch through the chicken breast to go through on the other side and come back up to hold them together. Now you can cook this in the oven or you can do it on top of the stove and we're going to do it on top of the stove because it's going to come out nice and brown for us. Now we're ready to go in the oven. Okay, now it's time to cook the chicken. We've had uh, put a little hot oil in the pan. You know, you can use vegetable or canola oil. And so what we're going to do is just put the chicken in the pan and let it cook. And we're going to check it after about 10 minutes on this side. Okay, we're going to make a little sauce for our uh, stuffed cranberry chicken. So we got a cup of cranberry, regular cranberry juice, and we got about a quarter cup of dried cranberries that we're going to add. And we're going to mix those, let that heat over medium heat, and we're going to add just a little bit of lemon juice. And we're going to bring that to a boil and let those dried cranberries burst just a little bit, and then that's going to be the sauce for our chicken. Okay, our chicken has been cooking about 8 to 10 minutes on each side, so we're just going to flip it over and see how it looks. See how it's getting nice and golden brown, and we want to brown it on the other side as well. And you can actually even pull the skewers out, if you like, just to give you a little bit more leeway on the chicken, if they'll come out. There we go. That way the chicken will flatten out and get done on that second side. Okay, now it's time to plate up our stuffed chicken breast with cranberries. Wow, that looks really good. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take the chicken, put it on the plate. We're going to put a little dressing on the side because we had some left over. Then we're going to add just a little bit of sauce with the cranberries on top. And then we're going to accompany that with a little green salad. There you have it. Stuffed chicken with cranberries. Today's recipe is nut crusted flounder on a bed of spinach. For this recipe we're using three flounder fillets and what we're going to do is we're going to make a topping to go over the flounder before we bake it. The ingredients for the topping are two tablespoons of mayo, a tablespoon of mustard, a quarter cup of dry roasted peanuts, salt, pepper, seasoning salt, garlic powder, crushed red pepper, basil, little lemon juice. Now we're ready to season the fish. So we're going to use the same seasoning that we used to make the topping. This is going to really give us some flavor that we need before we put it in the oven. And I like well seasoned food like most people do. And we're going to season the other side as well. You have to be careful with flounder because it's very delicate and it will break if you don't if you're not careful with it. So once the fish is seasoned very well, then all we're going to do is make that topping, pop it in a 400 degree oven for about 15 minutes and we're done. Now we need to crush our peanuts for our topping. So what we're going to do is we just pour them in a little small Ziploc bag, squeeze the air out, and you just take like whatever you have around the house, maybe a 
canned food item, a hammer, and just crush your peanuts down to little bitty bite sized pieces because that's going to be our topping after we put the other ingredients on. And now you're all set and almost ready to go in the oven. Okay, we got to mix the sauce to place on the fish. So I've already put the mayo and the mustard in the bowl. I'm just going to mix it a little bit very well. And then I'm going to add the other ingredients. Uh, a little garlic, a little crushed red pepper, a little basil, seasoning salt, salt, pepper, and a little lemon juice. And so we're going to mix that well and then put that over the top of the fish and top it with the nuts so we're just going to spread that out over the top so that as you can see it looks kind of weird but it's going to taste better than you think it would and then we're going to place the nuts over the top I just spread that out liberally to cover it and we add the nuts and we're done so we're just gonna sprinkle the nuts liberally that we've crushed up earlier over the top and we're gonna bake it in a 400 degree oven for about 15 minutes we're gonna cover it with a little foil to seal in the juices and it does not take long at all for this to be done and that's it now we need to cook the spinach for our nut crusted uh, flounder so we just gonna put the spinach in we put a little oil in the pan and basically it doesn't take long for the spinach to cook only four or five minutes so it's gonna cook down really nicely hey my hand got messed up yeah, so you gotta, when you, when you're there, never mind, never mind. Now we're cooking the spinach. So we just put the spinach in a hot pan with a little bit of oil. You can use vegetable oil, you can use olive oil. And basically it's only gonna take a few minutes for the spinach to get done. And this is what your nut crusted flounder is gonna sit atop of. The spinach has cooked down because it's getting wilted. That's to let you know that it is done. And it only takes a few minutes to do that. And then we're going to check on our fish. And then we're going to be ready to plate it. Just going to add a little bit of garlic to finish it off. To add a little flavor to it, we're going to season it a little bit with a little salt and pepper. And the spinach is ready to go. Now it's time to plate up our nut crusted flounder on our bed of spinach. We're going to plate up our fish our flounder, nut crusted flounder with the bed of spinach. So we put a little spinach in the center of the plate. It's the first thing we do. Then we're gonna take our flounder and just put it right on the top. Just like so. That's nut crusted flounder with a bed of spinach. Welcome to Fred Rico's Kitchen. Today's episode, we're gonna make a honey chili bacon bite. We use the ingredients of banana. We cut up some strips of bacon. We're gonna add a little mustard, about a half a cup of honey, a tablespoon of chili powder, and a quarter cup of wine, red wine. So we, the, basically what we're gonna do is we're just gonna mix all the ingredients together to make a glaze to put over the banana once we wrap it and put it in a 400 degree oven for about 30 minutes. 
Gonna mix up that honey chili sauce really well. Now we're gonna add just a touch of mustard to give it a little extra flavor. Oh, I can smell that red wine just kind of marinating and making all those flavors come together. So and this is going to be our glaze once we put them in the oven. So the next thing we want to do is we want to just take a piece of banana and we want to roll it in the bacon like so. And then we take a toothpick. We put a toothpick all the way through it. And we're going to do that for each one. Once this is completed, we pop it in the oven, and a few minutes later, voila, it is done. And we're going to glaze them about halfway through, and then if needed, we'll flip them over. But this is going to be a really good treat. Is to brush our bacon bites with our glaze that we have before we put them in the oven. We've already uh, put uh, some non-stick... Uh, spray on our pan so that they won't stick. And what we're going to do is we're just going to flip them over if we can and brush both sides of them as best we can and pop them into the oven. And once they've cooked for about 10 minutes we're going to check them because sometimes the bacon cooks really fast and it may take actually a little less than 25 minutes but we're just giving you that time as an approximate time. So once that is complete, it's not cooperating here, but that's the way, what happens sometimes when you're cooking. We're going to pop them in the oven. And those are your bacon bites. They're going to go in and we're going to be ready to see what they look like in just a few minutes. Final step to our honey chili bacon bites. We're going to baste them one more time because we definitely want uh, our guests to taste the flavor in them in that uh, honey chili sauce that we put on. And so what we're going to do now is we're just going to plate them up for serving. As you can see they're nice and golden brown. The banana is nice and tender. And there you have it. Honey chili bacon bites. Very simple and easy to make. Hope you enjoyed the show. Join us next time for another episode of Frederico's Kitchen. We'll show you how to do some great foods in a simple way. Bon appetit. <laughs>